We're back out in Fort Worth for some Texas poker, but this time we're at Bobby's house. You might remember Bobby from a few videos ago at the fort. Well, he invited us out to his private 2-5 game, and of course, I had to oblige. First, we feed our stomachs with some wings from Twin Peaks. Then we feed my ego by watching myself up on the big screen at Champions from just the day before. You may remember from last time my uh, reaction to taking a shot of Fireball. At the end there, we just hit some hands with aces. And then... But this time I had to prove my worth and took one without shedding a single tear. Huge accomplishment, I know. We buy in for $1,000 into the 2-5 game here at Bobby's. First hand, we look down at ace eight of clubs from under the gun. I raise it up to $35 over a $10 button straddle and Jacob in the small blind puts in the call. Heads up to the flop, which comes jack seven three with two clubs. Things are going great so far. I bet small here, I don't wanna lose my customer and uh, Jacob puts in the call once again. When the turn comes a brick, I decide to size up a little bit larger now, representing all the strong hands. $70 is the right price. And Jacob actually disagrees. He uh, check raises me to $170. This feels like a set or two pair. Still, I can't go anywhere with my nut flush draw. I put in the call and the poker gods answer our prayers on the river with the queen of clubs. Bang, we river the nuts. To make it even juicier, Jacob does not slow down on the third club. He fires out for $300. I do my best Hollywood acting job and then shove it all in for $500. Bobby, yeah, what sound does a train make? What's what? <laughs> <laughs> it's 200 more for him to call which he does with pocket kings. He didn't have the king of clubs in his hand. Still, he puts in the money. And I got invited to this private game and I like to give action, but it turns out the only thing we're giving out tonight is bad beats. I love poker, you know. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> and I love poker, you know, whatever. Right, hand number two, we have ace four of clubs this time from under the gun. I have $1,800 in my stack. I make it $20 to go. We are gonna get three callers, which means we are four ways to the flop, which comes eight, eight, five, rainbow. The action checks through, bringing in the king of hearts on the turn. King of hearts is gonna be good for my range. I'm gonna have king, queen, ace, king, pocket kings, all that good stuff. And when no one bets the flop or turn to me, I'm gonna take this initiative and fire out for $40. Bobby puts in the call. He does have home court advantage after all, and we are off to the river, which comes the 10 of clubs. Bobby's not gonna let me go for a bluff. Instead, he leads out for 150, and this kind of feels like a bluff in my opinion. He could have hands like queen jack of spades or hearts. Any other heart draw would be that. He could also have like nine, seven, six, seven for an open-ended straight draw. I beat a lot of hands. I'm tempted to call you here. I don't have a good hand though. And I also believe in the saying, you gotta give action to get it. So I'm gonna call loose here with ace high. And if we win against a bluff, that'd be pretty sick for the vlog. And if we lose, it's going over to Bobby and he's a good dude. So I put in the call and he turns over seven, eight of diamonds for flop trips, gets the max versus me and taking down that $460 pot. Nice hand, Bobby. I put the $10 out there on the button like everybody else has and a bunch of limps over to me. So I make it $60 to go. We're gonna get two customers and the flop comes 10 high, 10, five deuce with two clubs. When the action checks over to me, I check behind, bringing in the four of diamonds on the turn. Checks to me for a second time, and this is way too passive and small of a pot. I fire out for $90, and they all fold. Easy game. All right, hand number four. We're gonna raise up ace five of clubs now from the cutoff over a $10 button and a bunch of limps. I make it $40 to go. Two players call, so we're going three ways to a flop, which comes six, three, three with two hearts. The action checks to me, and instead of checking behind like I did in that last hand, I decided to go for a C-bet on this board because it's pretty, pretty dry, and uh, both players fold their cards. Gentlemen, if you're inviting me to your game, and I'm just able to C-bet liberally and take these pots down on the flop and turn, it's gonna be a long night for you. I highly suggest someone takes a stand. All right, we look down at ace-10 offsuit from the low jack, and I decide to call an open from the gentleman to my right. But hold on. We have the ace of clubs once again. It seems like every other hand we have the ace of clubs. Who's shuffling these cards? We're gonna need a wash. I mean, I'm not complaining as long as I'm taking down these pots, but ace of clubs, like four out of the first five hands, that's pretty crazy. All right, we are gonna go five ways to the flop, which comes 10, nine, nine, rainbow. We flop ourselves two pair with a pretty great kicker. 
Kevin fires out for $25 and I immediately raise him. Want to get value versus worst tens and I think a nine will play pretty face up. We can also check back on the turn, get to a free river, all that good stuff. When I raise him, he puts in the call and the turn comes a boat, the nine of diamonds. And now Kevin just leads out into us for $100. This kind of smells like a nine, but that's so rare. There's only one nine left in the deck. So we also could be doing this with pocket eights, pocket sevens, some sort of 10 that is now chopping versus my hand. I put in the call and we go off to the river, which comes the king of diamonds. Not a great card, because now if he has king 10 suited or offsuit, he has a better boat. But he makes it such a cheap price, $100 into the $400 pot. And to make it even better, he offers me a little side game. If I want to pay him 25 bucks, I can choose one card to flip over of his. If I pay him 100, he'll flip over both. So you see just to see one that one. That one. That is an interesting card. <laughs> I pay him 25 and turn over the 10 of spades. I mean, does he have 10 9 suited or offsuit king 10? Those are all the hands I'm losing to. But uh, I didn't pay $25 to fold for 100 I put it in and he shows us ace-10. We were chopping the whole way. I guess he had a free roll in the flop with the nine of spades being out there. But that $600 pot is being chopped up. Kind of a fun situation there with Kevin. I mean, he easily could have had 9-10 or king-10. Let's go. All right, we're going to take ace-6 of spades five ways to the flop from the small blind. I flop myself two pair and lead out for $10. We only get one customer, it's Merch from Under the Gun, a vlog watcher here from Fort Worth. We're gonna go heads up to the turn, which comes the Ace of Clubs, giving me a better two pair. I decide to slow down on the third club. If he has a four or two clubs in his hand, we're just smoked. I check it over to him and he checks behind, bringing in the Queen of Diamonds on the river. Could go for some thin value here, could slow down and check. I check, he bets $35 and I put in the call. He said, nice call. He was trying to bluff me for the vlog. Well, merch. The bluff didn't work, but you still made the vlog there, buddy. 9-8 of hearts. Not going to do it. $140. Ship it over to me, dealer. Let's go. Ship it. Ship it. Ship it. I never film my PLO hands just because they're an insane amount of work for my editor, Lucas. But we uh, end up scooping a $1,500 PLO double board bomb pot with Boat Boat. You're just going to have to take my word for that one. But uh, not for this one here. We looked on an ace jack of hearts from the straddle. I say the straddle, but we're on the button for $10. We see a raise to 25, a few callers over to me. And of course, with last action here, I have to raise it up with a premium ace jack of hearts. It's good enough for 125. Are we gonna get any customers? Yes, Lee over there, our good buddy on the right. He is gonna put in the call. He's a fun player and we are gonna go heads up to a flop. If Bob Barker says the price is right, well, I'm gonna say the flop is right in this one. Queen, Jack, Jack, bang, we flop trips. Lee checks it over to me, and I think you could play this one of two ways with uh, no flush draw available on the flop. You could check behind having essentially the nuts, or you could bet small here, try to induce and build the size of the pot further. I go for the second route, firing out for 75, and uh, it didn't work. Lee folds his cards, kind of a bummer there. I toss it over to him to let him know he can look at my cards, but he's such a gangster, he doesn't even want to see the trips, pushes it back over to the dealer. All right, what would a home game be without the bullets? Pocket aces from the low jack. I make it $60 to go over a bunch of $10 passive limps. We gotta punish those limpers, as someone once said. And they didn't limp for $10 to fold for 50 more. If it's good for 10, it's good for 60. Uh, isn't that right, Bobby? He puts in the call, and that's gonna bring in two other players going four ways to the flop. Flop's not great though, it comes king, king, jack. Any king now has a smoke. Pocket jacks does as well, although I don't really think these hooligans have pocket jacks in this exact spot. When the action checks over to me, of course I'm gonna check behind here. I'm either way ahead or way behind. The seven of clubs peels off on the turn, really shouldn't change anything. And Lee now goes all in. When Jacob puts in the call, that kind of seals my fate here. I might've called Lee's jam, but when Lee and Jacob are both in there and they wanna risk their entire stack, and play for stacks to be exact, I am not gonna do that with my two pair. I make a pretty disciplined fold here with pocket aces. Doesn't feel good, but uh, something does not smell right in this hand. When it's all said and done, Jacob has king queen offsuit and is taking down the $900 pot. So it's nice to see a run out there and know that we made a great fold. Few more hands to go, ace king of diamonds this time. We're gonna raise it up to 40. Put it in your pussy. <laughs>
and get a few customers, a little bit more of the same. Off to a flop we go, which comes ace high, ace 10, nine with one diamond. In between two opponents, I always start with a check, even if I have a great hand like ace king suited. I check it over to Bobby and he decides to check behind, bringing in another diamond, the five of diamonds on the turn. I now bet a little over half pot for $75, and Bobby's gonna make up for the missed action on the flop by immediately raising me to 175, and Lee doesn't wanna go anywhere as well. What is going on in this hand? He puts in the call, so I bet 75, got a raise and a call. I have top pair, which might not be good on its own, but I also have the nut flush draw to go along with it. Do I just rip it all in, having these guys covered? Do I just call? I decide to go for that route, just putting in the call here and the river card comes a brick. It's the three of hearts. Lee checks, I check it over to Bobby who bet that 175 on the turn and he continues now for 350. Lee is done with the hand, folds his cards, but uh, I'm not done with it. I didn't check the flop to fold on this river. I played it sneaky, so I'm gonna pay off Bobby here if he has a two pair type of hand, which it kind of feels like, so I put in the call. Bobby turns over a pair and a busted flush draw. Imagine the river is just like the seven of diamonds. We would have got stacks in. But uh, I don't want to be greedy here. $1,400 is more than enough. All right, this was a fun session, but all good things come to the end. But not before a curtain call. We pick up Ace King Offsuit from Under the Gun. I raise it up to $40, and we get three customers. Everyone's trying to give me their money, make the vlog, have a good time. But uh, when they put in the call, the dealer has other ideas. Queen, Jack, Seven, bang, we flop the nuts. Kind of a similar situation as before when I had ace jack on the queen jack jack board. Do I bet small here or do I check and try to let others catch up? You know what time it is, Andrew? 655! I go for a small bet once again. Let's see if it can work out a little bit better this time. I fire out for $55. The action folds around to Lee. He said, You're Cinco de Mayo. Who wants to play for his entire stack around $250 and of course I snap call. Not going to be slow rolling here in this game when I just got invited for the first time. The turn comes aboard pairing Jack of Diamonds which isn't great. He turns over A7 offsuit and the river comes a brick. We're taking down that nearly $700 pot to cap off the night. Huge shout out to Bobby and the guys for having us out here. And uh, even though I booked a big profit in this one, hopefully in the future I get an invite to come back and punt some money back to the boys. All right, that's gonna wrap up this private game from the undisclosed location in Fort Worth. Got in for a thousand, didn't have to top up fortunately and got out for 31.90. So a profit of 21.90 here at Bobby's game. And uh, yeah, shout out to him and his crew. Got some chicken wings, we had the music and uh, the shots were flowing as well. And we had uh, Ace King a bunch of times, had Kings, Aces, uh, I uh, can't complain about the action, definitely have been running good tonight, but if you guys like these home game type of videos where you get a live look into people's private games, which is how many people are doing on the internet these days, definitely let me know down below and I'll try to go to more of them in the future. As for now, we have a big trip upcoming. Stay tuned for more on that. Good luck on the felt, you guys. Wolfgang out, I'll catch you in the next video as always. Peace!